Hi. We're the Costalix. <laughs> we don't make a lot of videos, but we did make a lot of children. Um, we have five kids and a dog, and when you have five kids, you don't often uh, fly anywhere or go on elaborate vacations or really go into society much in general. So we looked for the ticket to uh, outdoor exploration and some road trips and an easy way to get away. And we ended up with this Buster. He's a 2017 Ford Transit Dually Diesel extended wheelbase longest, biggest, tallest 15 passenger van you can get. And we gutted the back half of them and turned it into a, a pretty much a glamorized bunk bed on wheels. Yeah. When we kind of first started dreaming about this, we spent a lot of time on YouTube and Instagram finding other vans to get inspiration and ideas. And there's so many cool people doing so many great things. Um, but we had to make it work for a family of seven. We loved so many of the ideas and none of them fit seven people. So we thought we'd make a quick tour of if you have three kids, four kids or more kids and uh, you want to know how you can cram everyone in and on and around a van, um, there is hope. Uh, this will be a, just a little quick tour to show you. It isn't glamorous, uh, but it is pretty functional. And we're camping here at Manning Provincial Park. And so far we've used the van like three weeks this summer, four almost, three and a bit. Yeah. And it's been good. Like it works well for us. Uh, we're missing a few things that I think are going to be crucial to all weather. First is a heater. We want to get a little diesel heater because uh, we were cold last night, got around zero. I think just an awning eventually our plan is to travel up towards the Yukon and maybe Alaska in the summer. So an awning would be great for those rainy days. But otherwise, I think we've kind of gotten creative and made it work the best we yeah. can with the short time we had and things will always be changing but yeah. okay. um, here's our van um, as we'll show you later the back beds kind of work for most of us and then we have the rooftop tent for two of us but we had one more kid left and not space for them so thankfully uh, this kid is super easy going and this works well for him so we found a um, it's actually a dog hammock off of Amazon um, it's meant for when you're taking your dog in your vehicle and you want to keep your seat clean. It hooks onto our back two seats, uh, hooks onto our front two seats and creates a hammock. And then we put a mattress on top of this um, and his sleeping bag. And it creates this kind of little um, nook that we can put our eight-year-old. Then, of course, storage is key because with seven people, even if we're trying to be minimalist, there's a lot of stuff. So we've got this awesome shelf up here, which actually holds quite a bit. Um, it holds all our extra blankets, our towels, our clothing. Um, right now we're on a bit of a shorter trip, so I didn't pack all of our packing cubes, but normally each kid has a different color coded packing cube for shirts, pants, and undergarments that goes up here. And then this curtain here um, snaps off and on for blocking out some of the sunlight at night from the front of the cab. One thing you'll notice, we don't have many lights in here yet. That's another thing on the list, uh, just to get some puck lights up here. But for now, we just have these LED lamps. Again, the back is what we totally gutted. Uh, we have a max air fan on a remote here, so we can cool, uh, bring air in, push air out, open it. It's uh, rain, it's got a rain guard, and we get a lot of rain here, so it's pretty crucial to have that airflow and it's been very good so we took out all the benches beyond these seven seats a little storage up here for computers ipads lights charging this is an arb zero i think it's a 73 liter uh, fridge freezer combo uh, we have solar on the roof which i'll show you later solar runs a battery system over here so this is easy access uh, you can go fridge freezer combo you can run both together as a full freezer or you can run it just as a fridge. Weekends like this, we just run the whole thing as a fridge because we're not bringing frozen food with us. But it's pretty efficient. 
Um, the hotter outside it is, the more the thing needs to run, the harder it is on the battery. But this weekend's cool. It's, it's pretty efficient and it's not needing a lot of draw. So on, in the back here is the bunk beds. So we have um, a double bed currently here. This is removable. So for the kids that throw themselves around a lot at night and fall out of things, which does happen and has happened, this is to keep them generally in the right part of the van. Um, if we go below here, this is mine and Marg's bed or whatever kid has nightmares joins us. So if, who knows where it ends up, but this is a queen bed. It's comfortable. Um, we have windows here. So if you look, you'll see there's two little portholes. This is a passenger van. So this wasn't a cargo van. So these two spots here, these allow a bit of light and we can block them out as well. This is the Blue Eddy AC200P. It is our battery bank, our inverter, our charging station. The solar charges it. The van can charge it while it's running and it distributes out to the fridge, to the fan, to our lights, to our devices. So this is kind of the hub. It's a very basic system. Uh, a lot of people run full um, inline batteries, uh, AGM batteries uh, with built-in systems with their own separate inverters. Those are wonderful systems. This just worked well for the budget and for the space and for the convenience of being able to, uh, to hook it up like this. So for us, this worked. It's not as probably powerful as an in-house built-in setup, but it does actually work really, really well. So um, this is the back of Buster. Because we have so many people, we had to make sure we could find the um, lowest amount of space for our garage possible. So we found these IKEA bins that are a little bit lower than the standard Rubbermaid size. Um, and they fit really well for our food, for our dishes, everything. It can go really far back. We can put multiple bins of these and keep all of our stuff organized. Uh, and then just another view of um, our queen bed on the bottom and then the queen bed on top. A lot of people are using the Scorva bed rail and that actually was such a great tip because um, we built out the sides with plywood uh, and then we have the Scorva coming across here. We, have, we put four of them in um, to hold up our upper bunk bed. Um, so we put in just a couple lights that string to our blue ID here for reading. We have one on the bottom and one up on the top as well. You've seen the tour inside. There's not room for seven people. Uh, we needed more room just because of the amount of kids we have. So we went to Stoked in Squamish and Stoked Adventure Outfitters and they make amazing roof racks. We bought a rooftop tent. This is the ladder to the eldest two's uh, rooftop bedroom, so to speak. This is the rooftop patio roof rack. Um, it's pretty heavy duty. We can put a lot of stuff on this decking here. So when we go on longer camping trips, we strap on paddle boards here, firewood. It's very sturdy, very robust. And then this is the tent. So it folds down flat, um, but it opens up in around 30 seconds, the whole thing's set up. So what we have inside is simply zippers, mesh, and a little sleeping cave there. It's a double bed. It comes with the padding. So there's a mesh mattress. We make the bed up with sheets ahead of time. So you just throw your pillows and your blankets in when, the, when we show up. So this gets us the two up top, the four in the bunks below, the one on the dog bed in the front. So we can all drive around and sleep in and technically on the van. Well, that's the tour. Yeah, we only get 18 summers with each kid. I recently realized that's not, that seems like a lot still <laughs> that's, that's not a lot so we just wanted to make sure that we're like we're not just putting off our dreams for someday but actually trying to make what we can happen today yeah this all started when we started doing the math of the trips we said when we first got married that we wanted to do we always said we want to go to Yukon and Alaska we want to go across Canada and now we're looking at our oldest who's you know halfway through middle school teenage years are hitting and uh, you know we did the math and realized oh that means there's maybe five summers before college max 
uh, if we put this off five years, he's out of the picture of experiencing these things. So for us, this was, uh, we have a lot of years for the younger ones, very rapidly closing window for the older ones. And so we decided to uh, postpone the uh, replacement of our old tired minivan that is our daily driver and buy this thing. It's, we bought it used, it's got some kilometers on it, it's got some quirks, but it works really well. I hope if you're trying to figure out how to make a road trip mobile or a van setup work for your family and you've got more than zero kids, that this is helpful in figuring out how to do that. Uh, you forfeit the whole inside kitchen, you forfeit some of the niceties, but it works. We love it. Yeah, it's 100% doable with, well, five kids at least. <laughs> at least. So a lot of the stuff inside the van, you notice the nice woodwork that was done. That was not all. When I say we, when we say we did this, that was largely my dad. Marg and I were his unskilled helpers. We helped move plywood and keep him fed and happy during the process. But we did this van conversion with my dear father doing the substantial portion of the skilled work.